Hey guys, we're going to get right into our buzzword for today, and we're continuing with our journey through the book of 1 John, and today we're looking at 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. And I'm not sure if you have seen the show The Biggest Loser, but they have just wrapped up their 17th season of the show, and I think that the reason why it is so popular is because people like to see overcomers. We like to see people who are with the odds stacked against them with a, a huge task ahead of them. And we like to see people overcome. We like to see people win. They like to see the biggest loser come in and lose the most weight and reach his or her goals of weight loss. And it just opens up their, uh, the world, their world to new possibilities that they thought that they would never be able to experience. And you know, our lives as Christians are full of difficulties and there are plenty of opportunities for us Christians to uh, overcome. There's lots that we need to overcome uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. There are obstacles that we must overcome. But in our text today in 1 John chapter 2, we see that we as Christians are overcomers. And let's look at that in verse 12. It says, I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you children because you know the father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. And as you look at this, many of the commentaries that I read said this is very poetic and in some translations of the Bible, they will have this, uh, over to the side to emphasize that it is a it be in, in it that it is a, a a poetical piece it is how some people describe it and he talks to the fathers the children and the young men now some believe that this is literally the age groups that he was referring to some believe that this was the the levels of their spiritual growth children, new believers, young men, you know, been, been believers for a while, and then fathers, the elder Christians that have been Christians for a very long time. And that may be the case, but what I believe, I believe these things are true for every believer, regardless of your age, regardless of your gender, these things are true for each and every one of us. And it shows us some things that it said the young men were overcomers. And I think that's true for all of us. And it says that they had overcame the evil one. So I want us to look at three things that this passage addresses that the evil one brings against us. And then three things that God does to confront those schemes of the evil one. In verse 12, it said that their sins were forgiven for his name's sake. You and I, we can overcome the evil one's schemes of burden us down with shame. Satan wants us to be burdened down with the guilt of the things that we've done in our past. And I know there's someone watching this video that you've done some things in your past that you are very, very ashamed of. And Satan likes to try to take those things that you've done and try to discourage you and try to get you to quit, just like the people on The Biggest Loser. That sometimes they want to quit because they're just not losing what they want to lose. Uh, Psalms tells us in Psalms 32, verse 1 and 2, this was written by David. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven by Jesus, 
whose sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. That's a perfect illustration of how we have overcome through the blood of Jesus. It says that our sins are forgiven for his namesake. Not because we've turned over a new leaf, not because we're doing better, but because of Jesus for his namesake. So we overcome the schemes of the devil when he tries to burden us down with guilt and shame by being forgiven. And this is in the perfect tense, meaning this action happened in the past, but it carries on its ramifications, its effect until today. So your sins were forgiven the moment you trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and they're still forgiven today, and you can overcome because your sins are forgiven. The next thing, the evil one wants to separate us from God. In verse 13 and 14, it says, I'm writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. And if you look at uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, we see that this is Jesus saying that they knew Jesus from the very beginning of their faith. That's the word gnosko, meaning to have a personal, intimate, real relationship with someone. So the fathers, they knew Jesus. First John 5, 5 tells us, Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God. And I says there in verse 13, C, I write to you children, because you know the Father. So it said they knew the Son, he who was from the beginning, and they knew the Father. Romans 8, 35 tells us, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? So we can confront and overcome the schemes of the evil one when he tries to separate us from God, the Father, and from God the Son. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ. And lastly, the evil one tries to bring falsehood and false teaching into our lives. And verse 14 says, I write to you young men because you're strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. I kind of think of Iron Man when I think of this. But why do I think of Iron Man? Because he is weak until he put on the suit, right? When he puts on his suit, then he is strong. And he can go and defeat all the bad guys. And that's how it is in our Christian life. We're like Iron Man. When we come to faith in Jesus, we put the suit on. We become strong in Christ, not strong in our own strength. So you cannot overcome the evil one in his schemes without being strong in the Lord. And that comes through putting on the Lord Jesus Christ and making no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So we're strong and we can combat the falsehood and false teaching. Remember, in 1 John, John is writing about false teachers that he came in and began teaching false things about Jesus. And he's telling these believers that you can stand against those false teachers because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Now all these verbs used each time in this passage, study it out, is in the perfect tense, meaning these things happened in the past, but they carry on with effects and ramifications for today. So they overcame and they're still overcoming and they will overcome until Jesus returns because their sins are forgiven and they'll always be forgiven. They know the Father and they'll always know the Father 
and they are overcomers. So let me say to you, whatever you're struggling with, whether it be the burden and the shame and guilt of your sins, know that Jesus has forgiven you. Those who are struggling with, uh, is God going to stop loving me? Do I have a relationship with God? Scripture says here that you overcome because you know Christ and you know the Father. And you can overcome the schemes of falsehood and false teaching because you're strong in the Lord. His word is in you and you're an overcomer. So whatever you're facing today, you are an overcomer. Start living like an overcomer. That is your word for today. Take care. Have a great weekend. Enjoy life. And I'm going to buzz off. See ya.